When it comes to the pinnacle of suspenseful thriller film series, it must be none other than the renowned Saw franchise, because until you reach the end, you'll never know the truth behind the events. Today, I bring you Saw 3, assuring you that the gory scenes have been omitted for your comfort while watching. Troy abruptly awakens from unconsciousness and realizes that he is chained with multiple iron chains, horrifyingly, directly attached to his flesh. This situation leaves Troy dumbfounded, just as a television screen in the vicinity displays a kidnapper wearing a clown mask. Hello, Troy. I want to play a game. The kidnapper spoke to Troy in a critical manner, and he was going to play a sick game of self-redemption with Troy. On the table ahead, beside a toy bear, is a bomb with a countdown, in order to stay alive. Troy must break free from his shackles and escape, driven by his will to survive. Troy endures excruciating pain as he forcibly breaks free from the restraints, but with time running out, Troy was on the brink of survival when he couldn't escape the bomb. Soon after, the police receive an alarm and swiftly arrive at the scene to investigate. Terry, the person in charge, immediately recognizes the perpetrator's modus operandi as that of Jigsaw, the serial killer behind the previous series of locked room cases. Jigsaw's reappearance makes Carrie realize that the situation is dire. During the last arrest operation, her colleague Detective Eric disappeared without a trace after taking Jigsaw into custody. Jigsaw's presence signifies that Detective Eric's chances of survival are slim to none. However, Carrie carefully observes that the mechanisms and setup in this room differ significantly from Jigsaw's usual approach. The only escape door in the locked room has been welded shut, leaving no hope for the victims to escape. Even if Troy manages to break free from the chains, he won't be able to leave. Could there be another perpetrator this time? To find out, Carrie rewatched the tape at home. Suddenly, she notices a frozen frame that catches her attention. As she stands up to investigate, her own image appears on the screen, leaving her dumbfounded. Realizing the danger, Carrie retrieves a weapon from the cabinet and fires several shots toward the corner where the camera is located. When she examines the cabinet, she discovers a hidden camera but remains unaware of the danger approaching her from behind. When Carrie regains consciousness after being knocked out, she finds herself chained with iron chains, just like Troy. The television screen beside her once again displays the kidnapper wearing a clown mask. This time, the key to the escape game is hidden in a glass container right in front of her. If she fails to retrieve the key within the specified time, a mechanical device attached to her body will tear her apart into pieces. To make matters worse, the liquid inside the glass is highly concentrated sulfuric acid. Fully aware of the kidnapper's sadistic nature, Carrie can only comply with the kidnapper's demands. Enduring the agonizing pain of the acid's corrosion, she manages to obtain the key and successfully opens the device. However, the kidnappers had no intention of letting her go. As death looms, Carrie finally sees the face of her abductor, but she can only carry this secret with her as she disappears forever in this place. The person behind these two locked room cases is none other than Amanda, Jigsaw's apprentice. From the previous two installments, we know that Jigsaw, suffering from brain cancer, doesn't have much time left. In order to complete his final locked room game, Jigsaw captured a female doctor named Lynn to perform a surgery and prolong his own life. Amanda directly attaches a deadly mechanical device to Lynn. If the surgery fails, her fate will be the same as Jigsaw's. This time, Jigsaw's game involves a father who has lost his son and seeks revenge. He is trapped inside a box. Hello, Jeff. Over the past few years, you have become a shell of your former self. Consumed with hatred and vengeance. Vengeance against the drunk driver who killed your only son. Vengeance against the killer who took your surprise and dismay. Was set free after a hasty trial. Today, however, it is you who will be put on trial. The kidnapper's voice on the tape provides hints for Jeff to survive. He must endure several tests of human nature. His final test will be to face his enemy who killed his son. And the ultimate test will be to choose between revenge and forgiveness. Two hours later, the door to escape will be completely locked. Upon hearing this, Jeff is utterly confused and has no idea what's going on. His only thought is to escape as soon as possible. Jeff frantically kicks the wooden box, causing it to lose balance and fall to the ground. Free from the box, Jeff notices a box ahead. Inside. The kidnapper has left a paper clue. The paper had instructions for opening the door and incomplete family photos. The box also holds a key. Jeff explores and quickly finds the clue to open the door. Upon opening it, 
he discovers a freezing cold freezer, with a hanging figure in front. Before Jeff can figure out what's going on, the door behind him closes automatically. Jeff tries to go back, but it's too late. As the room's lights illuminate, a naked woman appears before him, shackled and trapped. The freezing cold has taken a toll on Danica, barely keeping her alive. Jeff attempts to use the key from the door to unlock her shackles but fails. A nearby tape recorder quickly catches Jeff's attention. From the tape recorder, Jeff learns that the woman before him witnessed his son's accident but chose not to testify against the driver in court. Jeff now faces two choices. He can either retrieve the key and save Danica or seek revenge, letting Danica freeze to death. Faced with Danica's desperate pleas, Jeff chooses the latter. Suddenly, frigid water sprays onto Danica, the bone-chilling cold too much for her to bear. Despite his initial decision, Jeff's compassion compels him to retrieve the key and rescue Danica. However, the key is hidden behind the cold air vent, and after several difficult attempts, Jeff finally retrieves it. Jeff's face was already peeling from the cold pipes. When Jeff returns to save Danica, she has already been frozen solid, like an ice sculpture. On the other side, Jigsaw's condition worsens and he has to undergo surgery immediately to save his life. Jeff passes the key to the next level, where he hears another man crying out for help. Judge Halden is trapped below in the furnace with a shackle locked around his neck. The clues from the radio reveal that Judge Halden is the same judge who presided over the trial of Jeff's son's car accident case. Jeff cannot accept the lenient sentence handed down by Judge Halden, and the captor presents him with two choices. If Jeff chooses to save Judge Halden, he must burn his son's mementos to find the key to unlock the shackle. As soon as the tape finishes playing, a blade-cutting device activates. Rotten pig meat is hoisted and thrown into the blades turning into a foul-smelling pig slush that flows into the furnace. Witnessing this disgusting scene, Jeff is almost overwhelmed with nausea. Perhaps Judge Halden wasn't entirely at fault. Jeff chose to burn his son's mementos and save Judge Halden. Jeff successfully rescues Judge Halden and proceeds to the next stage. Here Jeff finally saw Tim, the man who killed his son. Tim's hands, feet, and head are locked in restraints. Once the machine is activated, Tim's limbs and head will be twisted like a corkscrew. Jeff is presented with two choices once again. The key is hanging from the barrel of a gun inside a glass case. But directly pulling the key will trigger the gun's trigger. Seeing this cruel punishment, Judge Halden tries to smash the glass but realizes it's impossible. With Judge Halden's persuasion, Jeff decides to save Tim. Jeff realizes that he can untie the rope holding the key directly and obtain it. However, to his surprise, as Jeff releases the rope, it triggers the gun mechanism inside, and Judge Halden is tragically shot and killed. This sight leaves Jeff dumbfounded. By the time Jeff regains his senses and prepares to save Tim, it's already too late. On the other side, Lynn successfully completes the surgery under crude conditions, saving Jigsaw's life. As per their agreement, Lynn is allowed to leave alive. However, Amanda has a change of heart and doesn't want to let Lynn go. Influenced by the appearance of a letter, the reasons behind this turn of events are unknown to us at the moment. Amanda intends to violate Jigsaw's rules and kill Lin. Jigsaw advises Amanda not to do it. He tells her that he and Lin are linked by destiny. However, Amanda doesn't understand the meaning behind his words and insists on shooting Lin. Unexpectedly, Jeff, who managed to escape, arrives at the scene with a gun, following Jigsaw's clues. This time, the kidnapped Jeff happens to be Lin's husband. Seeing his wife being shot, Jeff chooses revenge without Amanda realizing their relationship. Jeff shoots Amanda in the neck, and she falls to the ground. Jigsaw finally reveals the truth. The game wasn't designed to test Jeff, who lost his son, but to test Amanda. Jigsaw discovered that Amanda had already deviated from his original purpose and turned the game into a slaughter, killing the survivors. Amanda was already involved in the first escape room case. The key to unlock the shackles is actually on Adam's body in the bathtub. From the details in the first film, we can see that when Adam woke up, the key was washed away by the water. This also explains why Jigsaw could lie on the ground without moving for a long time. He had injected himself with a muscle relaxant. Adam, left in the room, didn't starve to death but was suffocated to death by Amanda when she returned. In the previous trial, Detective Eric was locked in a room and chose to break his own leg to escape. But then Eric met Amanda. As to whether Eric was murdered by Amanda or not, it is not revealed here. Amanda continued to choose slaughter and failed Jigsaw's test. Jeff, who escaped, knew that Jigsaw was the mastermind behind everything. He picked up a gun and prepared to kill Jigsaw. At this point, Jigsaw tells Jeff that if he kills him, it'll kill his family. Jeff didn't believe Jigsaw's words and pulled the trigger. 
but he realized that the gun was out of bullets. Jigsaw presented another proposition to Jeff. Since Lynn was severely injured, Jigsaw could summon an ambulance to save her within a few minutes. Jigsaw wanted to play another game of testing humanity with Jeff. Jeff could indulge in the fleeting pleasure of killing Jigsaw or choose to forgive him and let Jigsaw save his wife. However, consumed by hatred, Jeff couldn't listen and picked up a circular saw from the ground, slitting Jigsaw's throat. In the end, Jigsaw paid the price for his overconfidence, but he had already prepared for the worst outcome. Before his death, Jigsaw pressed the play button on a pre-recorded tape. Jeff didn't know that once Jigsaw died, the device on his wife's neck would be triggered, and she wouldn't survive. He would also be forever trapped there. Now you must pay the price. The price for living for nothing but vengeance. Now I will give you something to live for. I told you that you couldn't kill me, Jeff. But I didn't tell you why. And the answer is simple. I am the person responsible for the loss of your child. I am the only person who knows where your daughter is. She only has a limited supply of air, Jeff.